Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm Matt. And we are from Bakersfield, California, and we recently quit our jobs and are now traveling the Americas in our big red van, Clifford. So we converted Clifford in about six weeks, so we definitely did it in a hurry. We tried to capture as much footage as we can, but if you have any questions about how we built something or how we did some piece of the van, please leave us some comments or questions. We'd love to make more videos detailing exactly how we did it. So, I'm working on the kitchen cabinets. Clifford is in the shop, but I got some of this laid out, kind of the base before we took him over to LA. So now I'm just kind of building it out so it holds the fridge, working on some sh drawers that are gonna go above the fridge. Um, and I'll kind of keep building out this way through the sink. A little propane locker, like a airtight propane locker for that. So safety first. And then um, the stove and whatnot. So go to the first drawer. How'd you build a drawer? Um, yeah, I've never built drawers before. I've never really built cabinetry, never really built anything out of wood uh, with any real complexity before. So I watched some YouTube videos on how to do this and basically you use a table saw to make sure everything was exactly the same height, thickness this way. Um, and then what I did is I went up about a quarter inch and slotted this on the table saw as well. So I made two cuts. Um, to make about a quarter inch slit right here. And um, after everything's laid up, you can see that this matches all the way around. The back one I cut shorter. So basically I'm gonna take a quarter inch piece of uh, hardwood plywood that's cut to this square, slide it in here, and then put some screws in the bottom of this to hold it. And that's gonna be the base of the, the drawer. Um, so I'm just working on leveling drawer slides and installing those. Um, I use the bottom mat ones, it seems a little easier, that way you like automatically have a straight edge off the bottom of the drawer. And then, uh, yeah, I just basically measured how much extra headroom I want. So I measured from the bottom of this down four inches, and then I've marked where the front of the slide's in. So I'm gonna mount the cabinet side for the slide, and kinda see how it looks. So I think that should work pretty well. And then I'll uh, build another one. How did you build the frame? So the frame I did about one inch shorter than the total length of the cabinet, so 20 inches. I did the sides, um, the full length, and then did the front and back on the inside. So hmm. with that, I used pocket screws on the back side, so you'll never be able to see those um, to attach the back. And the front, um, same thing, but we'll be putting a false front on here to kind of do the trim work, I guess and make it look good, so this will all be covered up. So when you look on the inside of the drawer, it'll just look nice, no screw holes, yeah. anything like that. But it's it's very solid, so I think it'll handle all the bumping and moving around in the van pretty well without coming apart, so. So we built kind of the framework for the kitchen cabinets while we had a uh, clipper here. I measured how much length I had and kind of how much width. So I built this bottom frame out of one by fours. Okay. And basically just kind of cuts the length. You can see a little bit on the crease tie I put it together. Um, I used pocket screws from the bottom side to kind of edge, uh, edge glue all the boards together. Um, the reason I kind of built it like this is because our fridge is going to slide in and out there. I just don't expect to have to take the fridge in and out much, but there is a fuse on the back side of it. Um, in case it needs any maintenance or anything like that, I wanted to be able to remove it from the, the cabinets. Um, so it's frame rails kind of slide on that middle piece of wood there. Um, and then obviously this frames the fridge up. So we'll add some more pieces across here, additional drawers. Um, we're going to do the sink here, so there will be jerry can sitting under there, this will probably just have a cabinet door instead of any drawers. Um, and then I'm gonna build a propane locker on that side uh, that'll seal up our propane tank and vent to the outside of the van in case it has a pressure relief 
or something like that while we're driving. So that's kind of the plan. All this is put together basically with pocket screws and wood glue. Um, pretty straightforward, just making sure everything's as square as possible. Um, there's definitely some variation in mind, so there will be some custom cabinetry going on to make uh, everything look nice since it's not totally square, but yeah, not a professional. <laughs> Hashtag not a professional. <laughs> Built very little stuff out of wood. I saw a recommendation for pocket screws on Nomad's website. I forget the full name of the website. Um, but those have been great. It really helps me put stuff together, make it look pretty good, and it's all very strong. So um, I definitely highly recommend that for, for any newbie woodworkers that are trying to tackle this. Pocket screws. Mm -hmm. All right. So we made our first drawer and I'm onto the second one. So I just wanted to show you guys kind of the process there. I'm actually gonna extend this drawer an extra half inch. You can see I cut it a little bit short just because I wasn't sure exactly how the slides were gonna fit in there. Um, but now that I have that one fitting, I'm gonna make sure I give myself as much storage as possible. So I'm gonna use up kind of that extra one inch there. So I've cut my two side pieces. And the long pieces, same thing as last time, the sides will be the full length. Sorry. The sides will be the full length and the front and back will be inside of those. And then we'll pocket screw um, the faces you can't see on both of those. So I have these cut to size. Um, I've sent them through the table saw one time just to make sure they're all the same height. Um, I used two different boards and they fluctuate probably like a sixteenth of an inch or so. So I cut them down to three and a quarter inches um, just to make sure everything's the same. That way when I go to assemble everything, everything fits nicely. So now I'm going to work on making my indentations. So as you can see, I've already set the guide to where I want to start it. Um, so we're going to start the first cut and leave one quarter inch on the bottom side of here. So I'll make my first pass, which will be the, the bottom cut. And then I will move uh, the fence just a little bit like that. And then I'll make another cut and that'll make enough room for a quarter inch piece of plywood. Uh, each saw blade width is about an eighth of an inch. Um, so I need to set the blade height. And I want that to be approximately half, maybe a little bit less. Um, it always looks like a little bit less on the saw than when it's actually spinning, just because you don't catch the very top of the arc of the blade. Um, so I'll set that height. Um, and I'll run each one of these boards through. So I just ran all the boards through the first pass. You can see the first groove it made there. About half the board. Like I said, it always cuts a little bit more than it looks like when you have the board set up next to the blade. So I'm going to adjust the gate, make another cut just on the top side, I guess. Because it's still like that. It's on the top side of the board. Um, try to overlap them just barely uh, to make a nice groove for the plywood. All right, and I finished the second pass so you can see how much wider they are now. Um, they lined up pretty well. I actually made a mistake because I cut all four boards and the way we're gonna do it is we're actually gonna cut this board off right here so that when everything's assembled, um, the plywood can slide in from the back and I'll kind of set it up and show what that looks like. But basically from where we are right now, I'm just gonna take and raise the saw up, raise the blade up a little bit. Run this one through again, right here, and it'll cut it off clean. Oh, sorry. Uh, right there, right at the top. So it'll be flush, the bottom of that board will be flush with the top of this groove here, uh, if that makes sense. I'll make sure to show you guys once I have that cut and everything kind of laid out 
how it's gonna get put together. All right, so I just laid the pieces on my workbench slash uh, saw, so you can kind of see how it's all gonna line up. So you can see that those grooves we cut with a table saw all line up right there. This is where that quarter inch plywood will be sliding in. And this is how we cut the backboard. So this is face down, if you will. So this will be the top of the cabinet. This will be the bottom. And when we get that quarter inch piece of plywood cut, we'll slide it in here into the grooves all the way into the front. And then screw it down into this backboard. So right now, I'm going to do my pocket holes. So I'm gonna pocket hole the back side of this in two places, just below this groove. Um, both sides, the front will be very much the same. Two pocket holes right here and right here, just below the groove, just so that the screws have something to bite into on both sides. Um, so you'll have the pocket screws and you can see this cut on the front, but because we're gonna put another piece of wood on top of that, um, a false front, it shouldn't matter at all, you won't be able to see it. And then when you actually look into the drawer, it'll look really nice and clean. Whoop, we're down. So, i uh, go make some pocket holes. So I just wanted to take a second, show you guys my pocket hole jig. I looked for a Craig one at Home Depot and asked a couple people, and they couldn't point me in the right direction, but I stumbled across this thing. It was made by General, and I think it was only like 29 bucks, so it works pretty good. Same step drill bit. Uh, it's pretty much the same setup, you know, but it actually works really well. So I've got it set up doing um, one inch material because this is a one by four. If I said the three quarter, I found that it was just, it wasn't right. So um, I have it set at one inch and the collar set. So I'm just to touch off the bottom of the, the piece of wood. So there's just a little bit of wood left out of the screw pieces through. And then I'm using one and a quarter inch Craig screws, uh, softwood screws for this. So pretty straightforward. I mean, that's it. It's pretty budget, but it's been working. I can tell that I'm starting to wear out some of these guides because I've been doing a lot of pocket holes. So we'll see if it starts kind of giving out on me here. But hopefully it gets me through at least this van build. And if so, it was 30 bucks well spent. All right, so I'm about to put the first corner together. Just wanted to show you kind of the clamp setup that I use. Basically run one edge um, along the side of my flat table. Um, clamp that farther back. This clamp I'm gonna put right over this joint after I have it kind of butted up. Um, make sure that it's fitting appropriately across the edge and across the top. I have this piece clamped down so it can't move. And that way when you go to put your pocket screw in, it snugs everything up nice and tight without letting anything move. Because if you allow any space, I find that since the pocket screw goes in at a little bit of an angle, it'll actually pull your piece over and you'll miss this alignment on the on the edges. So just want to kind of show you guys that real quick. Um, and I'm gonna get a screw in there before that glue sets up too much. I almost forgot to do and show you the most important part, which is to make sure that your two pieces are fitting nice and square. Um, obviously that's gonna depend some that you got a flat cut here. Um, if so, once you butt these up, they do automatically kind of go to square, which these did. But if they don't, you wanna make sure that you clamp them so that they're square to each other. And that way your Craig screw doesn't pull it to equalize with the faces. I guess if you cut this angle, this face at a slight angle, it's gonna try to pull you off of square. So um, I'm using this super old saw, which obviously doesn't even have a super good backstop. Made that out of one by three. So um, sometimes it gets a little out of whack and I have to readjust it. So I've been doing good about trying to, you know, calibrate it every morning before I start working. But um, so maybe it's just a problem for me, but just something to keep an eye on while you're doing your project. So the second drawer is in, and I've found a slight issue. Now, because of my poor carpenter skills, you can see that that guy's barely hanging on. And uh, I've slid this back and forth a couple times. And just, oh, there it goes. Lucy, 
I don't know why I talked to her. She's deaf. But anyway. No. She doesn't like the neighbors. I'm going to take that video again. All right, maybe I'll edit that part out. But anyway, as you can see, that uh, this drawer can actually slip past this. So I need to make this a little bit wider. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some washers in behind this. Um, maybe each side, put one, just to kind of squeeze it in. Uh, and I should take it up without, you know, keep it pretty simple. Don't have to remake anything, so. All right, so I just finished up cutting all the pieces for our propane locker. This is what it's gonna look like. Made it out of, uh, what is it, 9 16 inch plywood. Um, basically, the only safe way to have propane in a vehicle is to have it in an airtight locker that's vented to the outside. So I'm gonna put a hole probably in the back corner um, through the floor and through the bottom of the van. Um, these, let's see, now I'll put the other guy. Propane tanks have a safety relief valve right here. Um, if they ever get too hot or you go up in altitude and they get overpressurized, they will vent and relieve pressure to keep from rupturing the tank. But because of that, um, since you're in a vehicle which is moving a lot, changing altitudes, um, can probably get pretty hot in the summer. We are going to make sure that it's vented to the outside and it's airtight to the inside of the van so uh, we don't get poisoned or anything like that if it decides to relieve. So you saw all the walls, um, roof. One thing I haven't made yet is the front. You can see this is just sitting on top of the tank. When it's done, it'll be flush with this. And I'm just gonna build a front piece that clasps onto the front. So I'll have weather stripping that runs around the whole front of the box. And then some clasps on the top and sides that'll suck it into the uh, that kind of picture frame there and seal it up. Um, we'll also have a strap and some hooks on the back side of it. So this will be strapped into the uh, box and into the wall of the van. Probably with some of those plus nuts or cross nuts. So yeah, it's uh, coming along. I'm just going to pocket hole everything, put it together with some wood glue. We'll come back in and seal it. I don't know 100% what we're going to use for that, but I'll let you guys know what we end up finding. It's good for wood, uh, a type of silicone or lap sealing or something like that. What's that? So we've been working on the kitchen today. Um, in the last video, I kind of showed you the propane locker that we built out of half inch plywood. I went and sealed all of the seams of that today. I just used uh, some liquid nails, like acrylic sealant that we had already. So the box is all good to go. I just got to make the front for it. Um, we obviously added all these shelves. We also got some other parts and pieces. We got our trash can and our RO system. Um, we love the RO system in our house so much that we decided we're putting one in the camper van. And I think it'll be good just because we're kind of water snobs. And that way, no matter where you get your water from, you know you're good. Um, so yeah, just mainly doing a lot of fitment and making sure everything has a home. So. We've kind of test fit a lot of stuff that we're going to have in here, and it's looking pretty good. Cabinet face is next. Yeah, yeah. So we're trying to figure out how I'm going to mount cabinets and the cabinet doors, I should say. So TBD. Haven't figured it out yet. We also got the kitchen cabinets, the lower cabinets in here. They're all installed, we're just painting everything. Um, I mounted those through the bottom of a van with quarter inch studs, similar to what I did on the, um, the bed frame back there. So I put it through 
in four different places. I was a little limited just because there's some frame rails that run through the van right here, so I couldn't get through to the underside. This is a propane locker. I still need to drill a vent hole in there. We'll probably go to Home Depot and pick up a little bit of like PVC pipe and I'll uh, drill a hole in there, insert the PVC so I can seal it and that way, you know, prevents any water from getting in and getting into the subfloor or any of the wood there. All right, so I'm just finishing up our propane locker, um, working on putting the vent to the outside. I've already drilled the hole. I needed to pick up a special drill bit for that. I had a set of carbon steel hole saws, but that won't go through metal, so I had to pick up a bimetal hole saw, um, which is out there on the drill. Let me show you that real quick. So it's got a little bit different teeth on it, designed for metal. Um, I started with a carbon steel hole saw and it just bottomed out. Um, this thing worked great. I got it in an inch and a half. Um, I'm using our... So I'm gonna make this out of two pieces. Um, previously we talked about this. This is a piece of our drain pipe that we use for the sink. Uh, I think it's called like tailpipe. This is an inch and a half on the outside exactly. So this fits perfectly in that hole. So I'm gonna put some liquid nails on the outside of this to seal that up. Um, but we also wanted a little bit of a jog at the bottom just so we couldn't get water straight up and down. I also wanna hose clamp some mesh over the end of this to keep critters out. Um, so we're gonna run kind of a two piece setup. This also slides in here almost perfectly. So I'm going to basically liquid nails this pipe inside of this pipe on the bottom of the on the bottom of the van it'll kind of come through and look like that. I have a little turn and some mesh. Um, that should prevent any water from coming up, uh, getting into contact with any of the wood or anything we have here. So that's kind of the plan. Next we put in the bulkhead fitting up in the top corner there. I'll show you guys that when I get to that. So tell us about the fridge. So when I first researched the fridge, I, did a, I found somebody who was installing this in there, camper van. And he said he tested it outside. It took like 40 amp hours at like 80 degrees ish. When we tested it in our garage, it took like 60 to 70 amp hours in a 24 hour period. Um, at like the same temperature, about 80 degrees. So, you know, 50% more than I was expecting. So that's part of the reason we got some extra batteries and we're also gonna try to stuff some poly ISO around the fridge just to improve insulation. Unfortunately, we didn't really plan for that to like have another layer of insulation. I could have easily like built in the space for it, but we didn't know. So we're gonna try to fit it where we can and hope it helps a little bit. So we're gonna talk a little bit about our cabinet faces and how we made those. We realized we kind of left out some of that footage um, while we were building. So the bottom faces are a one by two frame. So you can see the one by twos running around the outside. And then on the inside, we used a quarter inch piece of plywood that's just screwed into the front of those faces. Um, in order to hinge these, we had a little bit of trouble just because of the way I designed the frame for the cabinets. We used one by threes and they were on their side so it only gives you three quarters of an inch to bolt something to. So we couldn't use, um, I think they're called overlay hinges or something like that. So I ended up using just regular gate hinges. I had to use a router to actually recess this in so that the door would close flush. Um, but I ended up bolting that to the inside of this and the inside of the cabinet. So the hinge is sitting kind of right behind this outer edge right here. Um, and that's the same on all three of them right there. So I think these came out really good. They look good. I used a router on the inside of this to do this roundover. Um, this is all stuff that I just kind of had sitting around the house. Um, but you can get a lot of different bits if you wanted to do like uh, a different design or something like that. And it kind of just gives it a nice like finished touch, I think. Um, the top cabinets we used a, like I said, I think these are called overlay hinges, right here and here. So 
This is what I was talking about. We couldn't have used these on um, the lower cabinets because we had two of them next to each other. So unless I offset the hinges, it was impossible because they would have run into each other. So there would have been interference. Um, but yeah, which, sure. Like here. So I could have yeah. put a hinge here and the other hinges inside of that. Like that might have worked. Um, but yeah, we made the decision to just use those gate hinges instead. But with the top, since they were only hinges on the outside and they're meeting together, I was able to use these like self-closing hinges. Um, these are made out of half inch plywood. Um, again, just cut them to size, use a round over bit on the edges. Uh, I used a sander just to smooth them out and make them look good. And that was pretty much it. Sweet. Mounted the poles on them. That was yeah. pretty straightforward. So. so this is how we open our propane locker. We take these little wood pieces out that hold the bottom railing in, or the bottom part in. And then we have these hinges on the top that we open to get into our propane tank. And then we turn it on underneath. So I looked at using these latches. My initial design was to use these kind of on all four corners. So they're just like a gate latch or like a little cam latch. Um, so I used two of them on the top and I wanted to use them on the sides as well, but there just wasn't enough room between the propane locker and the fridge. And then we ended up installing the trash over there. So that's why we ended up with these wood blocks. Uh, and you kind of saw me taking it apart, but Basically that would sit in there like that. These latches come over and grab a hold of these. So that pulls the top tight, but then there's nothing on the bottom. So we ended up using these little wood blocks as spacers in there. And you can see that there, you have to compress that gasket on the propane locker door in order to get those in there tight. So that should squeeze the bottom in tight and kind of keep everything um, compressed up against that gasket. So we use just some automotive weather stripping here um, and then I use some liquid nails to glue this down and try to seal it up really well. It's not 100% perfect. Um, there are some small gaps but it should be relatively airtight and definitely an improvement over just having a free propane tank in the van. So for our drawer clasps, we initially ordered some RV clasps that you actually push and positively kind of lock in place, but we couldn't get those to fit, particularly on this top drawer, because it's so small, and the way we designed it, um, it was too thick to use the latches we initially purchased. So kind of in a pinch, because we were getting on the road, we decided to use some of these um, spring clasps. So you've probably seen some of these in a kitchen cabinet or something at a house. Uh, initially we just had one of these um, and we did have some drawer drawers coming open in turns. So we added another one to the other side. This bottom drawer has been great. It's super bomb proof. It stays shut all the time. This top one's still been sliding open a little bit. Um, so I'm going to try to modify these to make them a little bit wider, hoping that the spring will hold on to it a little bit better um, just to make sure that this one stays closed while we're driving because occasionally it'll slide open we haven't had any damage or anything break on it yet um, but I want to make sure that it's in there nice and secure uh, so something to consider that we didn't when I was building them was the latches um, actually we hadn't even gotten the latches yet while I was still constructing the kitchen so it's a good idea to have all your parts on hand, if possible, if you have the timeline to do that, just to make sure you can really think through how everything's gonna to fit together. Because I was definitely anticipating using those, and then when we couldn't, um, you know, we kinda of had to scramble to go to plan B, so. So we went back and forth on deciding between backsplash, tile, tile backsplash, or vinyl stickers. And while I love the look of tile backsplash, I was kind of overwhelmed by the work involved with it, with cutting the tile, with grouting it and with 
it just it just seemed like way more work than just adding these vinyl stickers <laughs> and the stickers look great too no one even know knows that they're stickers so yeah we went with vinyl stickers they're also lighter weight and they, I think they look great so um, we purchased them on Etsy and I believe they were about $80 for all of them so cost wise vinyl stickers were definitely cheaper than going the tile route with renting you know a tile cutter etc so I would definitely recommend looking for vinyl stickers for your backsplash instead of doing the tile. So I'm just about finished, but I wanted to show you how I did it. First I cleaned the, first. well first we primed the um, plywood on the back. We primed it a couple times um, with kilts primer and I let that dry for like a week. I read somewhere that you should let it dry a really long time. So we let it dry and then I just cleaned it today with some alcohol and rubbing alcohol and a cloth and then basically I just started on this corner and stuck the stickers in line. They're not perfect um, <laughs> but with this kind of busy pattern you can't really tell a lot of the imperfections. Um, so basically whenever I got to the points where I need to make these cuts is I used this rotary cutter and this, um, I don't know, cutting board and um, this little edge and measured where I needed and then just um, lined it up and made my cuts. And then, so first my, my big tip is before you stick them hard with a credit card, just soft stick it and line it up, like line a whole row up before you stick it with the credit card, um, just to make sure that it looks good and it's lined up. Other than that, I don't have any more tips. Overall, we are really happy with our kitchen setup. It is very functional and easy to use, and also it looks really great. We get so many compliments on it. I think if we were to change anything, we might change the fridge. Uh, we've had some trouble with keeping things either way too cold or not cold enough and the circulation just isn't very good in there yeah i definitely agree we've had issues with the fridge freezing stuff in the refrigerator section and then if we turn it down stuff near the door gets too warm and isn't kept cold enough to be stored properly um, we have a norcold in our 751 and we chose that fridge because we wanted a front opening fridge when we were doing the design we were looking at things like the ARB and Dometic and other things that are more of like a cooler or like chest type fridge, um, but it just didn't fit as well into our design to be able to access the top. So that was one of the reasons we went with that fridge, but yeah, we're still working through uh, getting it dialed in and some challenges that we've had with it. We would also recommend bunching the microwave in <laughs> as we did not do that the first time. And when we were on the cobblestone streets of Philadelphia, we had an epic crash of the microwave and shattered into a million pieces. So yeah, we'll link that video here <laughs> once it's up, but definitely bungee everything in. If you like this video, what should you do? Subscribe! And subscribe! <laughs> Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you have any questions, if you're like, what the heck? What, what did they do? They skipped over this part. Hit us up. We'll make sure to respond. <laughs> oh, Amber, you're such a good girl.